In this season of The Big Talk, you are going to have access to the most incredible speakers who recently performed at the virtual showcase, which is the culmination of The Big Talk Academy, my 12-week signature speaker training. Be sure to watch every single one of these speakers in this series because they are all equally as inspiring, entertaining, and powerful. And by sharing their important messages, they can change and even save a life. Enjoy. Jessica Pfaff began her sales and technical marketing career at Porsche. She then managed an SAP implementation project before moving into a role as a sales leader, building long-term strategic partnerships within the automotive industry. Outside of work, Jessica is, a passion, is passionate about coaching and mentoring collegiate women. She empowers them to walk into their own leadership roles by providing tools and feedback to build their self-confidence. Jessica holds a Master's of Business Administration in Supply Chain Management from the University of Michigan. And you can find Jessica in a suburb outside of Detroit with her husband, two boys, and pug dog. Please welcome to the stage Jessica Fath with Infertility and How I Moved On with the Help of a Mentor. I became a mother later in life. To be honest, it did not come as naturally to me as others. I struggled to stay in the present moment. My life had been fast paced and on the move until then. I was living in Europe, traveling around various countries, learning about other cultures. My career was the center of my universe and my colleagues became my extended family. My immediate family consisted of my husband and my two pugs. Lots of evenings, we would walk downtown for dinner at 7 p.m. because well, because we could, but I always wanted children to grow our family larger than just my two fur kids. Infertility kicked my butt. And after three miscarriages, which were devastating in themselves, I started hanging the idea on the shelf because the process was draining both mentally and physically. All of my miscarriages happened while we lived in Germany, far away from my family. I spent three weeks in the hospital during the last miscarriage as my uterus became infected and I had to have a second DNC as a result. When Chrissy Teigen most recently shared a photo on social media, probably as she prepared for a similar procedure, I think all women in the world who have suffered a loss like that had a pit in their stomach seeing that picture, a true depiction of the uncontrollable grief in that moment. So to distract ourselves, we focused on a big new journey, moving home to the United States. It turned into a project of sorts with lots of planning, anticipation, and new beginnings. My husband and I could start over buy our first home, be closer to my family. And of course, the timing was perfect because my sister was newly engaged and I could be there to help with her wedding. It seemed like the universe was calling us home. We bought our new house with four bedrooms, way more than we really needed, but we thought we might get some visitors from Germany. And we had fallen in love with that house downtown Royal Oak. It gave us a bit of the feel of European life still, but was right in the heart of the area I grew up in. We had a library nearby and a wonderful farmer's market, a playground around the corner, all things that would be perfect for starting a family. But the idea of getting pregnant only to deal with another loss was too much. Some time passed and we got settled into our new surroundings. I was working on getting my MBA and my husband had started a new position. We were content and life was good. It was a bit lonely though, since all of my friends had young children when I came back to the US. They were busy with school, doctor's appointments and play dates. 
I remember one weekend we offered to watch my best friend's four-year-old and we made it into a fun sleepover with a huge breakfast of pancakes and bacon the next morning. It was a treat for me to do that because we so longed for those types of experiences of our own. When I was introduced to Julie, she was already five months pregnant. And so we had a lot to talk about. We'd go out to lunch or get pedicures together and talk about motherhood. Sometimes her six-year-old daughter would tag along when we met up. I didn't have to be afraid of saying the wrong thing with her, like I did with my friends who already had kids. And she was truly interested in learning about me, who I was as a person, and how I'd met my husband. I remember how carefully I planned out an appetizer plate when she came over to our house one afternoon. I wanted to make sure all the foods were pregnancy safe. And of course, I didn't quite get it right, but that did not matter. We had a true connection and genuinely liked each other. We met at Chili's one evening, close to her house. So a bit of a drive for my husband and I. We had a great evening talking about all things baby and telling each other our dreams and wishes. At the end of the evening, she handed me a letter that was just addressed, Jessica and Timo. I thought it was such a nice gesture, but to be honest, I set it aside and did not read it right away. Julie had wanted me to come to the hospital with her when she went into labor. I arrived a couple of hours after her call, not wanting to intrude, but also wanting to respect her wishes and be there for her. I could tell there was both fear and relief in the room when I went in, but she was nervous and uncomfortable, not being completely in control of what was going on. The baby had taken charge at that point of how things were going to play out. I spent all night at that hospital waiting for Julie to give birth. It was a long night, but at some point the nurse came and said, it's time. Julie would like you to be with her. And so I was there with her and cut the umbilical cord as our son was born. You see, Julie is my son's birth mother. The room was full of emotions that night and it was heavy. There was a vibe of celebration and unconditional love, but there was also fear and loss very present in the room. It's hard to describe the love and gratitude I had for Julie and her partner that night as we sat in the silence after the birth of our son. We had just experienced something together that would bind us together forever. When we came home from the hospital with our son, I went and looked for that letter that Julie had given me. I was ready to read it. The experience that we had both been through had been so intense and beautiful, and I was missing her. It turned out to be a congratulations on the birth of your son card with a personal note. She thanked us for being the parents of her son and told us a few things that he liked during her pregnancy. I cried reading that letter because it was so thoughtful and selfless. It made me realize even more that Julie had chosen us to parent our son. She was grateful for us, just like we would forever be grateful to her. It is not easy to rise up after infertility. And although being a mother did not come naturally to me, I found a way to create exactly the family I had always dreamed of. No, we didn't give the gift of life to our sons, but life certainly gave us them. Many families do not consider adoption in their family planning because adoption is a journey in itself. We have never regretted building our family through adoption. These little people are our kids and they know they came to us through adoption. 
Choosing to create a relationship with the birth parents of your child is sometimes uncomfortable, but I can tell you it is worth that discomfort. I'm certain that Julie thinks of our son often, and I have stories to tell him about his birth mother. And for that, I am so very thankful. Julie shared her heart with me, and I shared mine with her. She will always be my son's birth mother, and therefore, she will be embraced as part of our family. Thank you. If you desire to be on the virtual showcase stage, hop on over to thebigtalkacademy.com and register now for my 12-week signature speaker training, where you can become certified by the Big Talk Academy and perform on my virtual showcase stage. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button and notification bell, and definitely share your thoughts in the comments. I will respond to each and every one of you. Big love, everybody. 